Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 31 to 40 for the CompTIA Server Plus exam. Let's begin. A technician needs to deploy an operating system that would optimize system resources. Which of the following server installation methods would best meet this requirement? The correct answer is C. Core. A core installation provides a minimal OS environment without a graphical user interface, reducing resource usage and improving performance. This is ideal for servers as it minimizes overhead, enhances security, and optimizes resource allocation. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Full. A full installation includes all features, including a GUI and additional services, consuming more resources. B. Bare metal. A bare metal installation refers to installing the OS directly on hardware, but it does not specify whether a minimal or full installation is used. D. GUI. A GUI installation includes a graphical interface, which consumes more CPU, memory, and storage, making it less optimal for server resource efficiency. Therefore, the correct answer is C, Core. A company's IDS has identified outbound traffic from one of the web servers coming over port 389 to an outside address. This server only hosts websites. The company's SOC administrator has asked the technician to harden this server. Which of the following would be the best way to complete this request? The correct answer is A. Disable port 389 on the server. Port 389 is used for unencrypted LDAP communication. Since this web server should only host websites, outbound traffic on port 389 to an external address is suspicious and could indicate unauthorized LDAP queries or data exfiltration. Disabling port 389 on the server helps prevent unauthorized access and harden security. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Move traffic from port 389 to port 443. Port 443 is used for HTTPS, not for LDAP, so this does not address the issue. C. Move traffic from port 389 to port 637. Port 637 is not a standard port for LDAP. The proper secure alternative for LDAP is port 636, but since this web server should not be handling LDAP traffic at all, the best solution is to disable port 389 entirely. D. Enable port 389 for web traffic. Port 389 is not meant for web traffic. Enabling it would further expose the server to potential security risks. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Disable port 389 on the server. Which of the following would be best to help protect an organization against social engineering? The correct answer is B. Recurring training and support. Social engineering attacks rely on manipulating people rather than exploiting technical vulnerabilities. Regular security awareness training helps employees recognize phishing attempts, pretexting, and other social engineering tactics, making it the best defense. Why the other options are incorrect? A. More complex passwords. Complex passwords help against brute force attacks but do not prevent social engineering, which tricks users into revealing credentials. C. Single sign-on. SSO simplifies authentication but does not stop users from falling for social engineering attacks. D. An updated code of conduct to enforce social media. A social media policy helps control information sharing but does not actively train users to recognize and prevent social engineering. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Recurring training and support. Which of the following will most likely be part of the user authentication process when implementing SAML across multiple applications? The correct answer is A. SSO. SAML is primarily used for SSO, allowing users to authenticate once and gain access to multiple applications without needing to log in again. Why the other options are incorrect? B. LDAP. LDAP is a directory protocol used for authentication and user management, but is not directly related to SAML, which is used for federated authentication. C. TAC ACS. TAC ACS is a remote authentication protocol used for network devices, not for web based SAML authentication. D. MFA. MFA enhances security but is not a core component of SAML. SAML is focused on federated identity management and SSO. Therefore, the correct answer is A. SSO. A server administrator needs to check remotely for unnecessary running services across 12 servers. Which of the following tools should the administrator use? 
The correct answer is B, a port scanner. A port scanner allows the administrator to remotely identify open ports and running services across multiple servers. This helps detect unnecessary or unauthorized services that should be disabled for security and performance reasons. Why the other options are incorrect? A. DLP. DLP focuses on monitoring and preventing data leaks, not identifying running services. C. Anti-malware. Anti-malware tools detect and remove malicious software but do not list running services remotely. D. A sniffer. A packet sniffer captures network traffic but does not actively scan for running services. Therefore, the correct answer is B. A port scanner. A technician has been asked to check on a SAN. Upon arrival, the technician notices the red LED indicator shows a disk has failed. Which of the following should the technician do next, given the disk is hot swappable? The correct answer is B. Replace the disk. Since the disk is hot swappable, it can be replaced without shutting down the SAN or stopping volume access. The RAID system will begin rebuilding the data onto the new drive automatically. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Stop sharing the volume. This is unnecessary because the SAN and volume can continue operating while the failed disk is replaced. C. Shut down the SAN. Shutting down the SAN is not required for hot swappable disks and would cause unnecessary downtime. D. Stop all connections to the volume. A properly configured SAN with RAID redundancy can continue operations while the failed disk is replaced. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Replace the disk. Which of the following can best be described as the amount of time a company can afford to be down during recovery from an outage? The correct answer is C. RTO. RTO is the maximum acceptable downtime a company can tolerate before operations must be restored following an outage. It defines how quickly systems should be bet online. Why the other options are incorrect? A. SLA. An SLA is a contract that defines service expectations, including uptime guarantees, but does not specify recovery time limits directly. B. MTBF. MTBF measures the average time between system failures, focusing on reliability rather than recovery. D. MTTR. MTTR is the average time required to fix a failed component, but it does not define the maximum downtime a company can afford. Therefore, the correct answer is C, RTO. Which of the following backup types only records changes to the data blocks on a virtual machine? The correct answer is B, snapshot. A snapshot captures only the changes to the data blocks on a virtual machine rather than creating a full backup. It allows quick rollbacks to a previous state without consuming as much storage as a full backup. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Differential. Differential backups record all changes since the last full backup, but they do not operate at the block level for VMs specifically. C. Incremental. Incremental backups record changes since the last backup, but they focus on files rather than data blocks in a VM. D. Synthetic full. A synthetic full backup compiles previous backups into a new full backup without rescanning data, but it does not track changes at the block level like snapshots do. Therefore, the correct answer is B, snapshot. Which of the following server types would benefit most from the use of a load balancer? The correct answer is D, web server. Web servers benefit the most from a load balancer because they handle a high volume of incoming traffic. A load balancer distributes requests across multiple web servers to improve performance, reliability, and availability. Why the other options are incorrect? A. DNS server. DNS servers already use round-robin DNS and any cast routing for load distribution, making a load balancer unnecessary in most cases. B. File server. File servers handle storage and retrieval, but they do not typically require load balancing. Instead, they use clustering or NAS SAN solutions for scalability. C. DHCP server. DHCP servers assign IP addresses, but they do not handle continuous traffic. Failover configurations are more common than load balancing. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Web server. A company uses a hot site disaster recovery model. Which of the following types of data replication is required? 
The correct answer is D, constant. A hot site disaster recovery model requires constant replication to ensure the secondary site is always up to date and ready for immediate failover. This minimizes data loss and downtime. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Asynchronous. Asynchronous replication introduces delays, meaning the hot site may not have the most recent data at the time of failure. B. Incremental. Incremental replication only copies changes periodically, leading to potential data gaps in a hot site setup. C. Application consistent. Application consistent replication ensures data integrity for applications but does not guarantee real time synchronization, which is essential for a hot site. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Constant. We have come to the end of today's video. Please make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. Goodbye.